Dog fighting is where dogs who have been bred, conditioned, and trained to fight are placed in a pit to fight each other for spectator entertainment and profit. Fights average one to two hours, ending when one of the dogs cannot continue. Dog fighting is a cruel and barbaric activity that has been around for centuries. It's a blood sport where two dogs, usually pit bulls, are forced to fight each other in a pit or a ring for the entertainment of spectators. The dogs are made to engage in a violent battle and attempt to tear each other apart, with onlookers cheering, screaming, and placing bets on the outcome of the match. The dogs suffer horrifying injuries such as massive bleeding, ruptured lungs, broken bones, and other life-threatening conditions. The loser of the match is usually killed, either by shooting, beating, or torture, and rarely receives any veterinary care for their injuries. Those that survive the battle rarely recover from their wounds and often suffer for a long period of time. Dog fighting is an aberrant activity as it causes extreme suffering to the animals. It is not only illegal in most countries but also widely condemned by animal welfare organizations and the general public. Dogfighting is a global phenomenon that has been around for centuries, but its popularity continues to remain shrouded in mystery. Although the exact reasons are difficult to pinpoint, it is likely that a combination of social and cultural factors are in play. The power dynamics between humans and dogs are thought to be a significant factor in why dogfighting is so popular. This power imbalance is often exploited for monetary gain, as well as for the purpose of showcasing dominance. Dogfighting has been linked to organized crime, including illegal gambling and money laundering. Although there is usually no concrete evidence to support this claim, the cruelty and violence associated with such activities is a major concern. As it is an illegal and immoral practice, despite the fact that dogfighting is illegal in most countries, it continues to be a popular activity in certain circles. It is important to be aware of the factors that contribute to this and to work to prevent it from happening. In this video, we will look at the background and history of dogfighting, the people involved in this illegal activity, the training of the dogs, and the physical and mental injuries they suffer. As always, you can find the sources in the video description. As early as 2100 BCE, Hammurabi, the king of Babylon, had his warriors armed with fighting dogs. This was not the first instance of dogs being used in warfare or conquest, however. In the early days of warfare, they were even used as living shields, with their bodies protecting their human masters from arrows and spears. For instance, during the campaign of the Persian kings Cambyses in Egypt in 525 BCE, dogs were also used extensively according to scripts and paintings from the era. Ancient Greek vase paintings depict dogfights, and even in the days of the Roman Empire, mastiffs were used to fight gladiators, other animals, and each other in the Colosseum. In 1525, King Henry VIII of England, a generous gift of 400 mastiff dogs was sent to the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V of Spain. The purpose of this gift was to provide support to the emperor in his efforts to wage war against France. Dogs have been used for a variety of purposes in battles and conquests throughout history. They have been known to frighten horses, flush out prey, and track and capture enemies. In addition, they can be trained to attack and kill their opponents. The use of dogs in battle and conquest has not been limited to ancient civilizations. During World War I, dogs were used as messengers, scouts, and search and rescue animals. They were also used to detect and locate wounded soldiers on the battlefield. During World War II, dogs were used in bomb detection and even participated in combat operations. Throughout history, 
dogs have been used as an important part of military and conquest operations. From their early use in Babylon to their involvement in World Wars I and II, dogs have served as valuable assets in combat and warfare. They have been used for a variety of purposes, from tracking and capturing enemies to providing protection and comfort to their human masters. Despite the changing nature of warfare, dogs remain an important part of military operations today. Dogfighting as a sport was considered to be a respectable form of entertainment by the British gentry in the 12th century. In the 16th and 17th centuries, dogfighting was a popular form of entertainment and sport enjoyed by many members of the royalty, noblemen and commoners alike. Dogfighting became even more popular in the 18th century, as they were often included in festivals and folk celebrations. During this period, crossbreeding of terriers with bulldogs was popular amongst dog breeders, which ultimately led to the development of more aggressive fighting dogs. As a result, dogfights became even more widely accepted, mostly organized as a form of gambling. The entrance fees to these fights attracted a wide range of gamblers, making it a profitable sport in many European countries. By the end of the 19th century, dogfights had become a professionally organized and regulated sport, with rules and codes that governed behavior at events. During this period, dogfighting reached its peak in terms of popularity and continues to be enjoyed by many people to this day. Although the sport has been subject to criticism, there's no denying that dogfighting is rooted in centuries of tradition and continues to be a popular form of entertainment. In the United States, dogfighting was a professionally organized activity until it was banned in 1874. During the Cold War, illegal dogfights that were organized in remote parks and forests in the Soviet Union. In the 1990s, these fights began to move to more central locations and became regular weekend events. The participating dog owners paid a fee and the winner of the fight would take all the money. This trend of dogfighting spread to the other former Soviet republics after the collapse in 1991. Kazakhstan has held international dogfighting contests since then and the winner of the contest is awarded a luxury car. Uzbekistan has taken a different approach to dogfighting and hosts dog exhibitions where the fights take place. In Azerbaijan, Georgia and the Asian parts of Russia, dogfighting is still a popular phenomenon, showing that it is still going strong even after all these years. Dogfighting is seen as an entertainment and a way to make money and it is still a popular activity in many parts of the former Soviet Union. Despite the fact that dogfighting is legal in certain countries, such as Japan and Russia, it has been prohibited in the majority of the world. Nevertheless, it continues to be a popular activity, with fights taking place either openly in places like Latin America, Pakistan, and Eastern Europe, or secretly within the United States and the United Kingdom. Dogfighting can be an entry point into a world of criminal activity. It can be a gateway crime for youth, providing them with a sense of power and control, as well as the potential to make money. This can draw them into the underground scene of dogfighting, which is often associated with gangs and other criminal activities. Dogfighting is a cruel and illegal activity that is associated with many other crimes. Not only is it linked to animal cruelty and gambling, but it is also linked to illegal drug use. During raids of dogfighting rings, illegal substances are usually found and seized. Additionally, two-thirds of dogfight raids result in the seizure of illegal weapons and often leads to the arrest of people with warrants. Furthermore, dogfighting disputes have been associated with serious assaults and homicides. Dogfighting is a reprehensible practice that is illegal in most of the world's developed countries. Despite this, criminals continue to participate in organized dogfights driven by an obsessive love for dogs, according to the BBC. Yet this love is misguided and cruel, as dogfights often result in animal deaths and serious injuries. Moreover, those that engage in this practice are more likely to be involved in other types of criminal activity. As quoted by a formal British detective, We've been to houses before where we've said, we're taking your money, your drugs, your gun. They said, yeah, right, but you're not having my dog though. I've seen them attack four or five coppers or burst into tears. Men who train fighting dogs often have a vested interest in the outcome of the fight. 
They often cheer and encourage their animals, and most importantly, place bets on them, as the dogs savagely fight each other until one is declared the winner. Though it is illegal in many states, spectators and participants in dogfights come from a wide variety of backgrounds. Despite the negative associations typically associated with dogfighting, the reality is more complex. From judges and lawyers to police officers and teachers, people from all walks of life have been known to promote or participate in dogfights. Despite the risks and dangers, the excitement and thrill of the blood sport attract a diverse group of spectators and participants. The illicit nature of dogfighting, as well as its potential for large financial gains, has made it a popular attraction for many people. Greed is a major factor in why people are drawn to dogfighting. Major law enforcement raids have resulted in seizures of more than half a million dollars, with individual fights often generating between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. Even the sale of puppies from successful bloodlines can bring in thousands of dollars. However, it is not only greed that drives people to get involved in this cruel and illegal activity. For some, it is also the thrill of participating in something that is forbidden. Despite the risks associated with dogfighting, the lure of large financial rewards and the adrenaline rush of engaging in something criminal keeps many people coming back. There exist three different kinds of dogfighters, street fighters, hobbyists, and professionals. While hobbyists and professionals tend to scorn the practices utilized by street fighters to train their dogs, which include starvation, drugging, and mistreatment, street fighters are usually connected to criminal gangs. These fights typically emerge due to insults, turf wars, or taunts. These types of fights are disorganized and conducted for money, narcotics, or recognition. Urban street fighters usually have several dogs attached to chains in backyards, fenced areas, basements, or garages. Urban street fighters often chain multiple dogs in outdoor spaces, like backyards, basements, or garages, which can be hidden by privacy fences. These animals are sometimes injured or killed during fights. And it is difficult for authorities to respond to these incidents in a timely manner unless they are reported quickly. Additionally, there are hobbyists who engage in these activities as well. They make extra money and entertain themselves by staging dogfights. Usually, four or more dogs will be involved in numerous pre-arranged battles, and the activity usually takes place in a limited area. Hobbyists usually communicate with each other and often return to the same place for the fights. Professionals are the last category of dogfighters. They take great pride in the dog's lineage, breeding generations of skilled game dogs, and they are able to make a large amount of money by charging stud fees to breed their champions. In addition, they can make money through the fees and winnings they collect by fighting their dogs. Usually, the professionals own a large amount of dogs, sometimes even up to 50 or more. Illegal dogfighting is a practice which has been perpetuated by unscrupulous breeders and trainers in order to exploit the natural courage and energy of the pit bull type of dog. These animals, which can make excellent companions and working dogs, when well bred and trained, are subjected to a number of cruel methods. A Chicago police officer who works to uncover and stop dogfighting arrests said they beat these animals. They feed them hot peppers, feed them gunpowder, lock them in small closets. They do everything they can to make these animals vicious and mean. Animals used in dogfights are subject to both physical and psychological suffering. Such damage can come about as a result of cruel treatment during breeding or through tail and ear cropping, which makes it harder for their opponents to catch them in these areas during fights and encourages more aggressive body language. Other methods used to make the dogs more aggressive include filing down their teeth, starving them, beating them, torturing them. And keeping them in isolation. Training for dogfights begins when the animals are around one year old. This process is slow, beginning with informal fights in which the most aggressive and self-defensive dogs are chosen. Then they are entered into more organized fights based on their weight and sex, with males usually being preferred. To make them bigger and more aggressive and stronger in fights, they are trained with weights or on treadmills. This causes abrasions on their paws or armpits due to the weight vests they are made to wear. The welfare of dogs used for fighting is negatively impacted by the use of anabolic steroids like testosterone propionate, which is used to increase their muscular mass and strength. Additionally, owners of these dogs may use various illegal narcotics such as ephedrine, cocaine, and methamphetamine, 
as well as substances like gunpowder and hot sauce to make the animals more aggressive and reduce their sensitivity to pain during the fight. This practice of giving drugs to dogs without proper medical supervision can cause serious cardiovascular issues in the animals. Dogs that are destined to be trained for fighting are typically bred, bought, or stolen. They are not provided with basic care and are often subjected to mistreatment from the start. They may be kept in a chain or a cage for the majority of their life and only interact with humans or other animals when they are taken out for training or to a fight. Furthermore, these animals are usually not provided with proper nutrition and denied access to water freely, and may not even have a shelter to protect them from harsh weather. To train dogs to become aggressive fighters, owners resort to confronting them with wild animals, cats, rabbits, stray dogs, or dogs that have been stolen by breeders specifically for this purpose. To ensure the dogs are adequately trained, they are often subjected to shock or prong collars, hung up and corrected with choke chains. These methods are commonly used during the training of these dogs. The physical well-being of animals can be compromised when amateurs attempt to provide veterinary care. This can result in the animals suffering from puncture wounds, lacerations, blood loss, dehydration, shock, and even broken bones, all of which can become infected and further damage their health. Unfortunately, many dogs that have been retired from fighting are simply put down inhumanely, often by being shot or hanged. Dogs can suffer some very serious injuries during fights, including deep puncture wounds, broken bones and damage to the teeth and gums. In some cases, a foreign object such as a fragment of a tooth from the other dog can get lodged in the dog's radius region, resulting in a fistula. These injuries can be difficult to heal and can take a toll on the dog's health. If not treated properly, it can even lead to death. The most common type of penetrating wound is a bite, often resulting in damage to the chest wall. In many cases, the body wall is also penetrated, leading to damage to the internal organs. It is crucial to seek medical attention as soon as possible to prevent further injury or even death. Consequences of dogfighting also include laryngeal paralysis caused by a bite to the neck, reports of broken teeth from the fight itself, and from handlers inserting wedge-shaped sticks to pry apart two dogs that have become fanged have been made. Such stick use can cause slab fractures of their canines and serious lacerations to their lips. The major outcome of these wounds is death due to blood loss, dehydration, and infection. In addition, there is the risk of spreading illnesses such as canine babesiosis. Usually dogs do not fight to the point of fatality, but death is still common after the battle. Since such injuries typically go unreported to veterinarians and not observed by the authorities, the only treatment that these dogs receive is from breeders who lack veterinary knowledge. It can be difficult to tell the difference between injuries caused by a spontaneous fight and those that arise from organized dogfights. Observations suggest that the wounds most frequently inflicted during spontaneous fights are in the shoulders, scruff, and haunches. In comparison, Injuries that occur in organized fights are more likely to be located in the head, chest, and forelegs. Additionally, if the animal displays diverse wounds in various stages of healing, this could suggest that it has endured numerous fights. They're getting their orders as they prepare for another assault on street gangs. Avenue, but that was before the Los Angeles Police Department declared war on street gangs in the city. And before shooting... Dogfighting is an activity linked to criminal subculture that includes gang activity, illegal betting, drug abuse and drug sales, and it has a detrimental effect on communities. Dogfighting often involves large amounts of money being exchanged, which can lead to weapons being present, and illegal gambling is an internal part of the activity. Dogfighting is an incredibly damaging and destabilizing activity that has a significant impact on communities. It is known as a broken window crime, referring to the idea that when a window is broken in a building, it sends a message to the community that no one is in charge and that no one cares, leading to a further breakdown in law and order. The presence of children at illegal dogfights is a serious problem. Not only are they in danger due to the violent nature of the activity, but research has found that such exposure to animal cruelty can lead to the desensitization of violence in children. 
The presence of illegal dogfighting kennels in neighborhoods can have a huge impact on the lives of those living nearby. Not only does it lead to unsanitary and hazardous conditions due to the large number of dogs and excessive noise from their barking, but it can also create a culture of violence in the area. Unfortunately, dogfighting is often linked to other types of criminal activity, such as assault, arson, and gang activity, which can further endanger the safety and security of the people who live there. What's more, those who dare to challenge or oppose the illegal activity may face intimidation and threats from those involved in the dogfighting. Dogfighting activities are a serious crime, and law enforcement agencies are often tasked with the responsibility of identifying and investigating them. Successfully prosecuting dogfighting operations presents unique challenges for prosecutors. According to a Detroit College of Law analysis, the number of arrests made in dogfight raids can range from 1 to 123, with an average of 20 arrests per raid. The dogfighting underworld is an intricate web of communication that spans both physical and virtual networks. Not only do fighters share information through the streets, but they also communicate through the internet. In these networks, fighters keep track of the legal proceedings of other fighters, and any successful defense strategies are expeditiously shared with a larger network. As awareness of animal welfare increases, so does the prevalence of companion animal abuse, particularly in the form of dogfighting. Despite the best efforts of enforcement authorities, these abuse cases are often difficult to detect and prosecute. To combat this issue, it is essential to educate the public and veterinarians on the indicators of animal mistreatment and to create efficient programs to quickly identify these behaviors and take appropriate action against those who organize these fights. A legal ban should be implemented to discourage activities that have a negative effect on dog welfare. It is evident, though, that some countries or regions might not be able to do this due to cultural and historical reasons. As always, we use several sources to create this short educational video on dogfights. We would like to recommend the most notable one, the welfare of fighting dogs, wounds, neurobiology of pain, legal aspects, and the potential role of the veterinary profession by Daniel Moda Rojas. So check it out if you are interested in a more detailed research on medical and legal aspects of this crime. The link is in the description.